The highlight of mine. Yeah. Was saving Mike's life when he passed out. Oh, let's um, talk we, about we this. We need to describe that whole story. <laughs> My, and Luke, Luke, let's ex- describe that in detail for us, please. Oh, wait, can I, can I, can, nope, I give nope, you some, nope. can I give you some pre-story? Luke. Yeah, pre-story. Some, some backstory. No, no backstory. So we left Lafayette at 10 a.m. 10 o'clock, roughly, yep. On the night before, yeah, on Thursday. Wednesday night, I didn't go to sleep till 1. I got up at 6, so I had about five hours of sleep. And we drove all the way up here, 20-something, basically 24 hours to get to this spot. And I didn't really sleep in the truck, but maybe 20, 30 minutes. And we got here, and we just, we set up camp, and... I don't even remember what happened after that. Dude, I can't remember. Well, we said we were all exhausted. We were all exhausted, so we set up camp, and is that when I passed out? No, we set up. Okay, so we set we set up camp so that we set it up to what to our basic needs, so that we could go lay down and go take naps. So everybody's taking naps. Me and Mike are sharing a tent because I have a very large tent. Uh. I'm in the back, he's in the front. It's like a two room deal. And uh, we're taking naps and I hear Mike get up, unzip the tent and go outside. Next thing I know, it sounds like he is like fumbling with something or like throwing something into the tent. (laughs) After about a minute after that, I hear, "Uh." Is Mike prone to night terrors? He he is. He okay. he he. We're just he, sleepwalking. Not sleepwalking, really night terrors, talking no, in his night sleep. night terrors. I've seen you. <laughs> it's night terrors. You oh, go nuts. I had never had. Well, that. I would I would describe it as just very very animated, uh, he's talking normal, in his normal, sleep. Normal. Yeah. Normal, normal. So I think he's talking in his sleep. So I'm like, Mike, what are you doing? And then I lean over and look out, and he's laying face first in the door of our tent, legs outside. <laughs> in the tent and he's just out cold and he's moaning and groaning and I'm like Mike get up and he starts kind of shimmying and shaking you asked him what are you doing I said what are you doing what are you doing Mike are you sleepwalking when you said that when you said what are you doing I thought he was having terrors and I thought he had his pistol (laughs) that's exactly what I thought he was starting to to be and I, I'm, Mike, what are you doing? And I yeah. was just sitting there going, I hope I don't hear the gun go off. That's a, exactly what I That's thought. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> so my first thought is that he was sleepwalking, and it's so hard to not laugh. <laughs> <laughs> He's sleepwalking, and he decided to lay down in the tent. <laughs> but <laughs> then I realized that when I when he starts kind of shaking a little bit, that something's wrong. Like, and he's I convulsing. Getting, He's convulsing. He's kind of almost having a little bit of a seizure. So I'm like, okay, this is not okay. So I'm like, Mike, get up. Get up. Trying to, like, startle him back awake. And he kind of comes to a little bit. And he stands up. And he's not there. He's not awake. His (laughs) eyes are rolling back in his head. And he's reaching for me like a zombie. (laughs) And I grab his hands. And I let underneath him is his medical kit it's got melatonin peroxide all kind of other stuff and the melatonin had like spilled out so i'm like <laughs> there's pills in i'm thinking he, he was sleepwalking taking pills and then drinking hydrogen peroxide <laughs> <laughs> so i said what are you doing what did you take what's wrong with you <laughs> screaming at him and he's trying to like find his composure finally he comes to and he's like oh I passed out. <laughs> I stood up too fast to go pee, and I came back to dove in the tent to try and not pass out. Did you That's... say his, his feet were like? <laughs> his, well, his feet were just outside the tent, yeah. and he was just in a yeah. Like I remember, I, I got up, I had to, I, like, I had to pee, and we hadn't been here that long, so I'm not acclimated to the altitude yet. And like, I just hopped, and plus I hadn't slept. And I just, I had to pee, and I was like, oh, man, I need to hurt him go pee, so I heard him get back to sleep. So I just hopped up around outside, and I start peeing, and I get that lightheaded feeling that, you know, you get when you stand up too fast. And I stop midstream, <laughs> and 
zip it back up and I just try to dive into the tent because I know I'm going down. And so I just get on my knees and I go in the tent. And then the next thing I knew, Luke's like, what are you doing? <laughs> there, there was fear in Luke's voice, yeah, though. Yeah. The, the fear. Because I, I, I was just like in my tent. I'm, I'm delirious at that moment. And I was like, I think Luke's got it under control. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't even function after that trip up here. <laughs> I, I don't even think I was I'm surprised making you didn't sense. see it on yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, I was all... Like, I, I, I peed enough, I guess, to where it went. No, because I had to get up and go pee. Like, after you, <laughs> you Yeah, because after you sat me down, you were like, all right, just lay down. I was like, no, dude, I still have to go pee. So you just have to stand up slow. You, like, I was fine. Like, I, you know, I, I know what happened. I stood up too fast and the altitude and lack of sleep and yada, yada, yada. And the peroxide I was drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peroxide and melatonin, what a cocktail. Yeah, you grind it up, you mash that down there, you chug it, dude. It just, you, you just pass right on out. I don't know what these kids are doing these days. <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. So that was the highlight of my trip. That, that was a pretty good highlight. Save the day, I guess. Man, I have to say that when we hit that knoll yesterday, that, that false peak, mm-hmm. we looked out over the valley. I walked up there. There was a smile from ear to ear that would not go away because that was what I was here for, that moment. We were about at 11, 2, 11, 3 mm-hmm. at that point. And then we got way up, and I was even more excited, except I got the worst altitude headache you could possibly imagine so i had to go down pretty quick i thank dan for coming with me Mm -hmm. it was pretty rough coming down Mm -hmm. Uh, every step was like somebody taking compressed air and filling up my head what was your deduction finally you think dan for what might have been going on i think it was a combination of altitude and um pack issues maybe 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 a few i I may have overpacked my pack a little bit for a day trip maybe just a maybe 20 pounds too heavy i don't know (laughs) okay (laughs) he looked like kuba gooding when he was trying to do the uh diet be the diver the navy diver with one leg and he oh yeah walk into the courtroom i I may have packed just in case i wanted to stay on the mountain (laughs) and if I didn't have a headache and it didn't wasn't about to storm, I might have. Because <laughs> I was in heaven. That was yeah. literally heaven for me. Yeah, and you had heaven on your back. And I, I, I had earth on my back. You had earth on your back, yeah. <laughs> There's a good analogy in there somewhere. I felt like Atlas yeah. for a moment. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty heavy. It took a lot. I'm, today I left uh, several lenses from my camera good i left a little bit more camera gear that i had packed away in there Mike, you got my spoon i oh i don't know what to do with it i left an extra day's worth of food out my spoon my probably pack. on the ground somewhere i'll find it tomorrow. you had a pretty good idea you were coming back to camp tonight yes i knew i was coming back yeah <laughs> yesterday yeah. i did not plan for that yeah i don't know what i'd have done without a sleeping bag but tomorrow, hey we're not i was there. playing i was just gonna build a fire i guess fire will take you a long way but I even had a pillow in my pack. I mean, I had I had everything. I had an extra I had extra underwear, that, socks, right? extra pair of gloves. Um, I last, last night would have been a bad night to sleep out there. Uh, cool. Yes, it would have been. I'd have woke up looking like Frosty, yeah, the snowman. Well, well, where we sat yesterday, it was, was covered snow in snow this morning. Yeah, till about noon. Mm-hmm. But that was my highlight. Mike? Mm. Man, I got so many. I just, this place is so freaking special. Just being in the mountains, like you said, like when you get to the top. Because I love, I love how you work your ass off to get up to the top. And like, since we've been quote unquote elk hunting, I haven't seen anything. I've seen no elk. I can't hear the bugles. Evidently, I'm tone deaf to a bugle. So I can't hear bugles. And, but like, I'm having the best time. You climb, you work your butt off climbing up 
these mountains to get to a vantage point and you're greeted with just this beautiful view that you don't even care if you see elk. I mean, you want to see them, but the, view, the views are amazing. But I think my highlight was seeing elk the first day and thinking that I was going to kill one the next day. <laughs> that hopeful. And then I drew the short straw, so I was first shooter, and we had just seen elk. We saw where they came out. We saw where they went in, and we were going to go there the next day. And just that, that ignorant bliss that I had yeah. going in thinking that I was just going to stick one opening morning. They have a way of teasing you day before opening. Mm-hmm. And you see them. And then opening day, <laughs> you know, yep. you, you know, another thing was is Dan and I were, we were back in that meadow, and y'all were still by the tree line that that Aspen Grove area tree line, and Dan and I went off and we made a bugle, and we got a call back, and that was a beautiful, beautiful sound, first wild elk I've ever heard. Wait, what was this? This is when we left you guys. This is when and it these were his call? the bugles that you could not hear. No, it was it was the two sets of hunters that no. were down in the valley. Not that. No, no. That, there was a different. That was, was a different. The first bugle was legit. I, I remember hearing it too. I, I think we had at least two elk talk to us. But the there was another bugle that was definitely hunters. We encountered. I mean, we there was two sets, same group, two sets. Until I see one, I won't believe that we've been called back to by an elk. You didn't hear it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Dude, those hunters down at the bottom swore I was an elk. Yeah. And we all together kind of, there's a consensus that I'm a bad bugler. And you, sw- you got me off were, this. They swore we were that I was an elk. No, you hey. started off rough. You got much better His as the day went today on. Was good. Dude, yeah. His yesterday the, afternoon the, the one here, the one up here today. I was so pissed. Oh, that was Dan most of the time. I only blew once today. Okay. I don't know whose it was, but it was, I was like, man, that is them. I know where they're heading. I have to get down. I'm like so mad. Like, I'm going to go chase them right now, (laughs) knowing that it's them, but I couldn't pass up. That's what kills me. Because you don't know. Like, you're like, oh, that's a hunter. You still got to go. Unless you, you saw the dude and it's right there, you got to go no matter well, what. Not necessarily. If it's a hunter, he will come to you. If yeah, it's but a hunter, what? you can bring him to you. True. An elk you don't, doesn't you don't come have, to you also? An elk comes also. But, but, but you don't have to go. If you have any idea that it might be a hunter and he's answering you Look up, guys. to you. But what if he's thinking Look up. the same thing? Wow. Well, he's eventually going to come to you. One, one, somebody's, somebody's going to come. Yeah. You can go to him or he can come to you. That's the first. What is? Stars? Look, yeah. Yeah. It's third night. Yeah, I told y'all it wasn't going to rain after we put the... Man, you should see the barometer, what it did today. It went, it jumped <laughs> 20 points. It went up? Um, yeah. It went from 126 to 140-something. So is that up. good or bad for elk hunting? I think it's good. I, 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 always, I always thought any sort of jump or yeah. lower, high or low. Yeah, I would read a lower falling barometer generally, generally means a storm system moving in. Okay. A rising barometer generally indicates fair, high pressure. Yep. Uh, that would make nice, sense because nice, he nice said weather. as soon as it went up, that storm system that came over mm-hmm. just dispersed. That would be the. You know what else I think is good for elk hunting? The fact that those guys that were camped down by the entrance to Left. Sky City are gone. Yeah. Damn. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, there'll be some more man. activity. You see it? That's today. And you're saying it was about 10, uh, this 30 is, before it went up? It was. Oh, shoot. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, I thought we were going to get smoked with a storm. From this morning, um, probably once we heard all the thunder. Mm-hmm. Right after it started like going away, it just skyrocketed mm. straight up and this broke apart. Well, that may be the system then. Maybe, maybe, nice. maybe we're done. Maybe. It's cold. Yep, uh, that's what I said. It's because we had those all those clouds clear. It's gonna be a colder night tonight than it was last well, night. I'm hoping that tarp kind of insulates our tent a little better. It might. It might. I'm gonna blow up my air mattress. Good night. Well, any last words before I turn this uh, off? Before we thoughts. just go to final thoughts. 
Go do final thoughts. Oh, final thoughts. Okay, let's do lesson learn. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Good call. Lessons learn. Do we don't have time. That's a whole new podcast. No, just make a quick. <laughs> one. What? Everybody gets one. Lesson learn up just to this one. point. We'll do a lessons learn podcast after yeah. this trip, and it'll be three parts. <laughs> I'm gonna do one real quick. Don't pack your bag as much the same way you train with when you don't have to. Just because you can do it. Wait, I thought mean we all had 25-pound sandbags in our pack. Today? I added my 50-pound <laughs> sandbag along with my gear. You had 50 pounds today? No, yesterday. Damn. I was, I was probably between 40 and I was probably 50. Yeah. I had a good, solid 15 the hell did you have in there? All my camera equipment. My camera lenses. Damn. Batteries. Just all the camera stuff together. Just the camera stuff weigh like 20 pounds. Pretty close. <laughs> and you think of all the batteries, but I left the batteries, so it's probably just about 15 pounds in camera gear. Hmm. And then I had, I carried a gallon of water going up. And I packed about 15,000 calories of food. Does going down hurt anybody's knees? No. You don't feel it in y'all's knees? I feel it in my ankles. I do when I'm not using a trekking pole. I feel... Dude, to be honest with you, walking from... Uh, walking the drainage here, walking the creek, seemed harder than... Yeah, flat, flat ground has its surprising dis- difficulties. That you don't realize. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because... I'll know. walk a mile on the flat ground. Y'all walk a mile up to that point right there. And oh. We'll see who's more tired. No, I agree. But... I think it's just... When I get down... the same distance. I'll say this. One when mile, I get down to the mile. bottom and I think that I have it easy from here on out, it <laughs> is not easy. No. That's what I mean. It's still walking. Yeah. Dan, back. you got a lesson learned? And, and, well, it's a lesson I teach myself over and over and over and over and over again. I still haven't learned it, apparently. But be very careful when you set stuff down <laughs> before you go walking away. Inspect the area. Make sure you've gathered up everything you set down. Otherwise, you'll wind up having to walk back downhill 300, 400 feet elevation to retrieve the thing you left behind. So... so- did you have an experience on the mountain about this? Yeah, yesterday we got to the final, the highest point of our whole day, which was up around 11, around 11, 8. And I realized that I had left my rhino radio down at the last spot we'd stopped, which was about 400 feet downhill. And uh, it was just... I'd hung it on a tree. I had turned it on. I was gonna uh, check and see, check about waypoints and see what what we were close to from previous trips out here. And uh, I, I was left with no choice but to go back down the hill no, and get the radio and then come back up the hill. It wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. That's my lesson. Yeah, man, I I thought we'd all just go down at that moment. <laughs> I hear you, Dan. I was, I was, in my my brain went real fast. I was thinking, well, maybe I can get Luke to run down there and get it for me. <laughs> Luke, no. Luke's, Luke's a good guy. He's a good friend. Yeah. I know he's got a lot of respect. He'll run down and get I'm it. good. I'm not <laughs> that good. <laughs> I would have done I, it if you'd asked. Yeah, I know. I would have too. I, I know. I know. But oh yeah, I'd have let Mike go because it was, it was his idea and, to and go so, all the way up that mountain anyway. Just, just true confession <laughs> that I, I some, it's a couple of things went through my mind, but uh, there was no, nothing to do but get up and go down and get it. <laughs> And sure enough, it was hanging on the tree. <laughs> right where I left it. I left Man. a jacket out here once. A good jacket. My hunting jacket. Mm. And uh, fortunately, I had GPS that spot. Nice. And so the next day, I went out there and walked right up, and there's my jacket. Oh, wow. So that was company. That's a good, good reason to take GPS points out here. Where you sit. And so stuff you can like return. That, yeah. yeah. That's probably a good lesson. When you're hanging out somewhere for a long time, yeah. I somehow lost my butt pad today. Mm. That's a bummer. I haven't had it one. It wasn't strapped in good enough. Which I don't know how you, you didn't see it because you were walking behind me all, the whole way. You lost it before you got to the walla. Yep. 
when no I went that when I sat, went to sat down at the Waller, it was gone. Oh man! So I had to sit on my pack. Because the whole way up, I was dodging trees, man. I bet it was that first half. Crazy. In the it was falls. probably it was probably actually right when we crossed the creek. Yeah, I bet you that's exactly where it fell. When you out. jump, when I jumped, well, we could go find. I know right where we crossed. Fell yeah. out and almost landed in the water when we jumped on the way back. Really? Sucker landed right on the edge of the water I, on the bank. I I just sloshed on through. <laughs> I didn't even care. Like when I came down, I I went like straight down, just as I came up. <laughs> and it was more of a bouncing down. <laughs> I had to sidestep that yeah. whole way down. If I would have faced forward, I'd have done some oh, summer. another stuff. lesson yeah. that we all learned. Waterproof your tent. Yes. Yes. That was Waterproof your tent every year. I'm going to use that as mine. That's going to be my Go ahead, lesson Luke. learned. Go ahead. My lesson learned is to waterproof your tent. Why? Because <laughs> last night, well, okay, I'm going to turn this into a two-parter. Two-parter. Where they have, both have to do with rain. <laughs> One is the tent, and I'll tell you why in a second. But two is when it starts raining, when you're in the woods, take the time, put your rain gear on. Yes. Because even though you think that it's going to stop any second, because if that's what's done all day long, and you put your rain gear on five times today, <laughs> it's not going to stop when you, when you think it is. Me and Mike walked a mile back. In the pouring rain. By the way, y'all hear the hoot owl back there behind us? Yeah. He's, he, he, you'll, you'll I hear heard him last night. Yeah, keep listening. Go ahead. Go ahead, Luke. Uh, me and Mike well, had to walk a mile back in semi-dark in the pouring rain last night because we were too stubborn to stop and put our rain gear on because we thought we were right there by camp and it was going to stop any second. So then when we get back to camp, it continues to pour down rain and... We get on dry clothes. Then when we go to go to bed, our tent is leaking because our rain fly is soaking, sopping through because there's so much rain. So that was lesson, my lesson to make sure you waterproof your rain fly especially, but also spray down the outside of your tent with, what's it called? DWR. 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 What does that stand for? Durable water resistance. I don't know. <laughs> because you will be sorry if you don't. Yeah, and Dan Dan had the similar problem. Durable water resistance. Not as repellent. bad as me and Mike. Uh, repellent. So what's our temporary fix? Our temporary our fix is, situation? is tarps strapped to the top. So and maybe another lesson, sub-lesson of that is always bring some extra tarps. Always, always bring, bring extra tarps. You can't have too many Found tarps. It? Yep. No, it's like part of... Always be that prepared. That's the one I had. Like a boy scout. Did you think... I have... If you can unlock that truck... There's a roll in the back seat. Uh, y'all, 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 y'all be quiet for a second. Oh, yeah, listen, now listen, third roll listen, listen. Listen now. Me and Luke are hearing it. You guys hearing it? Yeah, exactly behind me. Behind me. Yep, I hear it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, may have to get away from the crack of the fire. Bugles? <laughs> well, you got your ears covered up too, Mike. It don't matter. I can't hear them. You, you don't hear Anytime it anybody bugles, I cut both my hands. If you walk over by your I truck. I thought about turning my bugle into one of those big ear things that you stick in your ears so you can like, hear stuff <laughs> really far away. <laughs> like the old school hearing aids? Yeah. Where they put the stick brass that big horn? funnel in your ear. <laughs> right there. What? See it? Right here. Gosh, right here, look Luke. Look those freaking stars. Right yep. here. That's yep. a big difference. I see it. Oh, shooting star. Oh, yep. son of a yep. bitch. Yep, yep, Man. This, there's nothing better than looking up. pretty good when you up. see a shooting star with the, oh, there's another one. God dog <laughs> it. I just looked down. Man, seeing them with the fire. He's in everything. Bugles, shooting stars. There's Dude. no moon. Nope. Having no moon. All right, no. Mike, you have to do your lesson learned, and then we can wrap this up. I learned that I can't hear bugles. <laughs> well, what's the lesson there? Lesson is wear ear protection. I guess you could say that, yeah, ear protection. Because my dad did not teach us about ear protection. I shot guns my entire life thinking that it was no big deal. What, what did I tell you when you're ripping out drywall from the front? front so wear Louisiana? ear protection. I we said were... that's my biggest regret in my life is not having worn more ear protection as a youngster. It is now because I didn't realize I had any hearing damage. 
until I discovered like I love elk hunting, and now I'm like, oh, well, well I, I can't do it by myself because I'll never find a bull. <laughs> and it's it's amazing. You won't be a solo hunter. There will be saying? no solo hunter in Mike's future. Mike's not going solo this whole trip now. I'm just gonna start bringing Mackenzie. She can bugle and hear the bugles for me. Yeah, she yeah. she's pretty good. She as much energy as she has, she'd probably beat you to the mountain top of the mountain too. She might. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. I'm actually thinking about turning in pretty soon. Give me a headlamp. Oh, there it is.